you know, ramifications to committing insurance fraud, either fines or potentially jail time. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, there's an expression uh, to be uh, penny wise and pound foolish. Yes, you may save some money on your insurance premiums by saying you live somewhere outside of New York City. But insurance is a funny thing. Insurance is that thing that you don't like paying for, but you're certainly happy you have it once you need it. And if you don't have it when you need it, either to cover your medical bills or cover your butt if you accidentally cause um, an accident or injury to somebody else, you can have a very, very big problem. So I would ask everybody out there to, to think very carefully about what they tell their insurance company um, if, uh, if they ever ask where you keep your car. And, and I'm just saying this as almost like a public service announcement. This, is, this happens very, very rarely. Uh, you know, I've dealt with, over the course of my career, I'm guessing probably 10,000 cases. This has maybe come up 50 times, so a very small percentage. But it's upsetting to me because Usually I won't be able to take your case because I don't want to have anything to do with that situation. Um, or you may have a really good case. You know, you may have a situation where, you know, a drunk driver runs a red light, smashes into you and you have a broken leg or, and are going to miss a year of work. But if you've told your insurance company that you live in North Carolina, but instead you really live in Jamaica, Queens, you're going to have a very, very big problem and most likely not be able to recover any money and also not have your medical bills be paid. So be smart, folks. Be careful, folks. And if you have any questions or concerns, even with respect to insurance, and you don't even have an accident, like we say, the consultation is 100% free. The advice is 100% free. You've got nothing to lose. Even if you're not in an accident, just have a general question about your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance. Happy to speak to you. Happy to give you solid advice. Um, to lead you in the right direction, because that's what we do here. We're, we're, we're attorneys who care, and we're attorneys who do it the right way. Our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Again, 844-PPID-LAW. Absolutely. Once again, folks, cruising with the case handler. We are speaking in several areas this morning right here on 93.5 WVIP FM. We have extended play today. Stand by immigration people who want to hear the immigration questions. Okay, I know many of you want that. The questions have been coming in. And feel free to call 844 774 3529 to ask those questions. We'll touch back on Fred at the close at the Seco, the man who handles business. And of course, but squeeze, if I could just interrupt for a second because I had a question for Adam. I was on mute um, by accident. Adam, what about a situation where uh, somebody uh, lives in Brooklyn, but um, uh, I don't know, they have a cousin who lives in Long Island, who, a cousin who lives upstate New York where the insurance rates are cheaper. What if they want to insure their car up there as opposed to Brooklyn where it's more expensive to, to insure your car as opposed to, I don't know, someplace around uh, Syracuse, New York? Well, uh, that's exactly- What about that situation? Yeah, that's, exa well, that's, that's exactly what we were talking about. I mean, that is essentially insurance fraud. You know, a lot of people- you're not going to use a fake address. You know, maybe their cousin lives. Okay, let me give you family, another example. What if, what, if, what if you have, uh, what if somebody lives in Brooklyn and he has a second home in, um, I don't yes. know, in Ulster okay. County, so where it, the it, rates it, are cheaper? It, exactly. So, you know, that's, and that's something that, that's an excellent question. That's something that comes into play. So a lot of times the insurance companies will call and say, you know, I've got a problem with this claim. Your client says that they live in um, uh, Albany, New York, uh, but the driver's license is a Bronx address. Can you explain it? Uh, and the first thing I'll do is call the client and say, you know, what's going on here? And a lot of times they'll say to me, well, I have a second home. You know, I, I, I spend about, you know, three, four months out of the year um, up there. Uh, either I'm a seasonal worker or that's a vacation home or I commute back and forth. And as long as you're able to establish that you have some kind of bona fide residence there, you can avoid um, a, a situation. But they're going to ask for things like a lease or a deed or a mortgage or uh, utility bills, 
some kind of connection. Um, and uh, generally, the I find that that if you can produce some valid information in this regard, the the presumption is that you're being honest. But there are situations in which people, and I had this several years ago, and my paralegal Sandra may be listening, and she remembers this case, that the guy like lived in Orlando and and has been up here for three years, and then claimed, oh. I forgot to change it, but that's not true because every year your insurance policy renews, you get a copy of your insurance policy and says, if you have any changes to your address, your license, your cars, you, you should uh, advise us right now. Otherwise we're going to assume everything's consistent in the same. And you know, his excuse was, I forgot to change it, but that was baloney. And he had some very, very big problems. We had to drop the case, his medical bills, um, were unpaid and he was personally responsible for him. So like I said, you can be penny wise, pound foolish, but if you can establish that you do have a residence uh, and you do spend a reasonable amount of time um, at another, at another uh, uh, house or apartment or condominium, then uh, you know, usually the insurance companies will give you the benefit of the doubt there. Adam, okay. your question of, do you have to prove it's your primary residence or just that you have a residence? Um, generally, you have to prove it's just a residence. It doesn't have to be a primary residence, you know, but a lot of people, um, you know, we have snowbirds, right? What's a snowbird? A snowbird is an individual that lives up here uh, in New York and, and drives down to Florida and spends the winter in Florida. And a lot of people have Florida plates because the Florida rates are cheaper and then they come up here in New York. Uh, but as long as they can establish that this is a bona fide address down there, uh, usually the insurance companies, um, you know, will 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 uh, validate that and and uh, approve the claim. But it's always dicey, you know. They're gonna they usually want a recorded statement under oath. They usually want some uh, financial documents showing that you have a tie to that address, and uh, of course, I've I even had insurance companies knock on neighbors' doors upstate saying, hey, have you seen uh, DeSico lately? Uh, you know, he claims he's up here uh, every other weekend. Um, and it, it gets very, very serious. And it's scary. And it's one headache that, that you really don't need. I mean, God, when you're in an accident, it's such a stressful situation to begin with, right? First of all, you're in terrible pain. You got medical bills piling up. You may be out of work. You know, they may be suing you as well, saying you caused the accident. The last thing you want to have to battle out is with your own insurance company who should be in your corner because you pay the premium. So to save a few hundred bucks a year, um, I tell you, it's, it's just not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. it. It's, not. it's not worth it. Um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, um, Adam Handler speaking on personal injury. Um, we're just speaking about the, the, the fact that we need to make sure you have your ducks all lined up in a row. It's extremely important. Um, don't do anything fraudulent where, when it, period, anyway, when it comes to um, your insurance and so forth. And that's the reason why we have Adam Handler here. He's going to be sharing a true success story in a few with us. We once again have extended play here on 93.5 WVIP FM. Murphy's Law has allowed us to extend for a super long time. And um, everyone is standing by to hear immigration questions being answered. Once again, folks, I am speaking with attorneys from a firm known as Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, referred to as PPID. You can find them on the internet at Pollock at PPID.com. You can find them on social media at PPID, also on Instagram and Facebook. We have the case handler, a man who has been on the station for well over 15 years and has actually um, helped out a lot of people. And the answer is yes, Adam. <laughs> okay. The answer is yes. Told you that way eons ago. Inside Convo, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, you know, we are here helping out a lot of people. I mean, when I say I am truly, this is not, for me, it's not just the commercial side of it. I am truly very happy. And I even sleep better these days knowing that I have, they're now my friends. I have friends, you know, who are actually helping people who really need it. I know Conrad doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have to do this. Nelson's been doing this for 13 years. Freddie's been doing this for eons. He went to school with Conrad. They don't have to be doing this. But I think after you, you, you do business for a while and you realize how it impacts people, you want to continue helping people. 
and I, and I do believe that's the reason why we were all put here. Yes, we fight when we're younger and saying, hey, I want this, we want that. Once we've been through it, I, I've, 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 already, I've already stood on the table with the bottles in my hand and Adam Handler looking at me like 15 years ago, like this guy is crazy. But we've been through that. It's really genuinely from our heart helping people. And that's what PPID is doing. And with that said, we're going to jump into immigration and come back to the other areas here on 93.5 WVIP FM and also on Facebook where people are now sharing the pages. And we're asking you to go to our page, David Squeeze Adam Handler, okay, the Case Handler page and PPID's page. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want, as a matter of fact, if you want to speak to the attorneys for free in any of the areas I've mentioned and people want to know if they're getting free immigration consultation, call now. It's a phone consultation. You'll be able to speak with any of the attorneys off the air, privately and confidentially by you now calling before the top of the hour. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Three, five, two, nine. Jumping right into immigration and gentlemen. Let me, let me just pause, yeah. squeeze. Let me just pause you for one second, just because I know people may be just tuning in now. Ladies and gentlemen, the number that we just gave out to you is the number for our practice, and we have uh, Fred DeSico, one of the name partners uh, of the firm, uh, on the show this morning. He handles the real estate and transactional matters of the firm. Earlier, before the top of the hour, he was talking uh, and gave some very, very important updates as to the phase two reopening and how it may affect you if you are a tenant or if you are a landlord and you're either owed rent or you owe rent because the courts are now opening and allowing landlords to file um, eviction actions. So if you have any questions whatsoever regarding rent or mortgages or banking, anything that you is concerning you with finances and real estate, give us a ring. I, of course, I handle the personal injury de uh, department, Maverick, uh, Nelson, and uh, Maestro, Conrad uh, handle the immigration. But I, I really want to make sure that everybody out there understands and appreciates that we a are a full service law firm. And we are, of course, and we stress this all the time, practicing attorneys. We're not just on the radio advertising our firm and going to pass you off to an associate. Yes, we have associates that work for us, but we are ourselves practicing attorneys that handle the cases ourselves and obtain the best possible result for you and your family. Our number again, 844-PPID-LAW, 844-PPID-LAW. Sorry, I just wanted to throw that in there for the new listeners tuning in now. That's the reason why I wear the pilots, man, because you catch me when I fall, man, and vice versa, okay? And you make sure the entire plane does not fall, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's, let's get into immigration. Once again, we are answering your immigration questions. This show is live. It's Wednesday, June 24th. It's 27 minutes after the hour. I've got more than competent attorneys here with experience beyond, I can't say. All right, ready, willing, and able to help you. Now, remember, if you want a free consultation, 100% free phone consultation with an attorney, which is rare, period, okay, call this number now. If you call this number and you don't get a, an appointment, I will change my name. I'll get off the station, okay? I will never do this again. Call the firm now and say, hey, I heard squeeze in the attorneys. They said that I can get a free 100% consultation with an attorney, all right, off the air. It is true. Dial this number now before the top of the hour. The number is 844-774-3529. Ask them your question on immigration or any other area. 844-774-3529. First immigration question that's up. I'm going through I-485 for child of LPR under 21 for the F-1 visa as a student. My interview was scheduled for April 4th, 2020, which was can canceled. Will I be affected by the new ban? I am in the US right now. A lot of ban questions coming in. No, the ban does not apply to anyone in the United States. All right, good. All right, 844-774-3529. Don't lose out. Get your free immigration consultation privately, but you got to call 844-PPID-LAW. That was Nelson Madrid, AKA the Maverick. The Maverick because he's that good. Hi guys, I'm currently in the US and I have a CR1 visa which will expire on December, 2020. 
I have to apply for removal of conditional status. Do you think it might affect me with all that's going on? He's not subject to the ban. Again, if you're inside the United States, the ban has no effect on you. Uh, CRVs are what he's referring to as conditional residence, meaning that he got his green card through marriage. Uh, they were married for less than a period of two years. As a result, he, was, he received conditional residence, which is valid for a period of two years. And apparently it is expiring December of 2020. He has to submit an I-751 application prior to the expiration of his temporary green card. He can file it 90 days in advance. So if it expires in December, he can file it in September. Um, and he's going to have to demonstrate that he and his wife are still living together. That's a valid marriage. If for some reason they're no longer together, they need to them. Typically, they would need to get a divorce before they submit that application. Um, but if they're still together, just get your application and you'll be fine. But Conrad, is this subject to public charge? The 751, to my knowledge, is not. Uh, that remains to be seen. But as far as I know, it is not an issue for the, the new 944 form. No. And if I could just add, um, even after you file the 751, it is common and it's happening a lot more today than it did before that immigration issues what's called a request for evidence, right. asking for additional evidence to demonstrate the bona fides yeah. of your marriage. 90% of them get, get, get on our feet these days. So that's, that's just important to keep in mind and it's important to know. Okay. I want to get... So, uh, card under the ban what's up freddie what? going in and out go, go ahead. the country will they be able to get back in with a conditional yes income? as long as when you have a conditional residence card um you can travel it's a green card it just has an expiration date on it for two years in two years um if they're going to travel i would suggest get back before the card expires once you submit your 751 application, immigration will send you a receipt. That receipt is valid for a year um, and will enable you to travel and to work while the green card the new green card application is pending. So yes. Okay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us here on 93.5 FM and you're saying, hey, what the hell's going on? I'm hearing squeeze on some attorneys talking on personal injury, real estate law and immigration and more. It is real. It's not fake. Okay. It's not fake news. All right. It's not orange news, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, call the firm now. Once again, everybody who calls this number I'm about to give and you want a free immigration phone consultation, it will be just that, F-R-E-E. -E. But you got to call before the top of the hour and they'll answer your question off the air if you want. And that's an attorney setting up a consultation for you to speak with you. And then once again, it's free, the consultation. But listen, be smart. Don't do your case yourself afterwards. Hire them. Call and get that free consultation now at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I have yet since I've been doing the show with these attorneys to see them get stumped. You know, Squeeze, if, if I could just add something right quick. We had a caller yesterday who basically tried to file his case on his own. Conrad, you're going to like this. And his application got kicked back twice. So he was asking, why is my application getting kicked back twice? What immigration is doing now is if you leave any question blank, they are kicking it back. Okay, but again, obviously this is something that, you know, everyone does not know. Right. But because your application was kicked back, it has nothing to do with the merits of your application. It just, again, you left something blank that should have, if it's not, not applicable, you need to write not applicable. You can't just leave it blank anymore. Okay. And once again, we are very happy with the numbers that we're currently seeing on Facebook extremely high. Do remember to do every one of the attorneys and myself a favor by sharing the page that you're watching on your timeline and also in groups and on other pages. All right. Once again, it's a law firm, PPID. If not, probably the most powerful law firm there is in helping people in so many different areas. Isn't this beautiful, people? You can just go to this law firm and each of them specialize in their own area. It's not like you go to Nelson, go to Nelson. And, and, and Nelson the Maverick says, let me, let me mute uh, Freddie. I got to change his name up also on this thing. All right. All right. Uh, it's not like, you know, you go to uh, the law firm and you see Nelson and you give him your immigration case and you said, and guess what, man, I, I got an issue with my landlord and Nelson's going to say, hold on, let me just, let me just hook you up here and talk to you about that. No, 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 no. He's going to walk down the hall and said, Hey, Freddie, this is out of my league, man. I only, ha I only handle immigration. 
you got to handle this real estate situation. So once again, that's what the firm is all about. I am proud of them and you should be too. Hire them, ladies and gentlemen, but get that, uh, get that test drive first by speaking with them for free. Call now, 844-774-3529. Once again, I urge every one of you, some of you have doubts in your head about an immigration question that you may have even asked elsewhere. Ask Nelson, and I'm sorry I'm pontificating him, but he has heard and spoken with so many people who have gone elsewhere and they were told the wrong thing and the wrong thing was done for them. I am saying, call the firm, ask for the attorneys and speak with them for free with that free immigration consultation. The number is 844-774-3529. I guarantee you a free consultation if you call before the top of the hour, off the air privately and confidentially. All right, let's get back into another question as the calls come in. And we just, just ladies and gentlemen, we just had a call, you know, this is all real time stuff today, uh, uh, June 24th. We just had a phone call come in for a real estate consultation. So thank you, Don, for listening. And uh, we'll get back to you ASAP. We've already sent your message uh, out to the, uh, to the real estate team. So Freddie, look out for that. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. And by the way, folks, remember that Freddie is here to help you in any real, in real estate capacity, even closings. All right. Very important. that And, and that's something that we'll speak about later, um, Freddie, or another day where, you know, uh, real estate entities, you know, who, are, who get their clients are, are actually recommending the, the lawyers for them, which they should not be doing. No, the, the individual. I, I, we had somebody right before the pandemic hit. I can't remember if I walked into Fred's office and told them this, but a client calls. Uh, they went they went to a real estate broker to find a house. The real estate broker got them an attorney Everything. and the attorney told mm -hmm. them that they didn't need to do a house inspect, a home inspection. And now they moved in. And there's mold and broken pipes. What a scam. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're, you know, I hear on this radio station all the time, um, uh, people advertising uh, for, for, for buying homes and selling homes. Uh, and I'm sure they are credible people because this radio station does put on credible um, advertisers and companies, but not everybody is honest. And there are some big time scammers out there. So if you're listening and you're hearing about a real estate deal that's probably too good to be true. Fred, what, what do you think about real estate deals that are sound too good to be true? Well, there's no, uh, the expression is there's no such thing as a free lunch. Right. Uh, something is too good to be true. It is too good to be true. And, um, and back to your issue of, of inspections. Um, look, in New York, you're in your first invitation to properties is through your broker and there are very good brokers out there some of my best friends are brokers but you need to understand that the only person on your transaction that cares about you and only you is your lawyer the broker has a, a, a huge amount of money on the line on every deal and brokers sometimes have inspectors that are their friends and, you know, if you use a broker's inspector, you know, maybe that inspector isn't going to point out all the negative things because he knows his friend wants this deal to go through. I'm sorry to say this. The point being, you need to have an independent inspector. When my clients call me, we give them a list of inspectors and we tell our clients, call three of them. But understand, we're not recommending the inspector. We're giving you the names of inspectors that our clients have used. And when we speak to the clients, they tell us they were very satisfied. If we get told the client wasn't satisfied, boom, the inspector is off the list. So to go back to what Adam is talking about, before you pay any money, before you sign anything, especially if the deal is too good to be true, pick up the phone, call us. First of all, I can walk with you for the two or three month period right to closing as your lawyer. And I could also take a phone call in the beginning and tell you what you should do and what you should be aware of. I'm doing this 35 years. I've seen it all folks. I've seen the good, I've seen the bad. I've helped a lot of clients. And you know, that kind of assistance is what makes me get up and come to work every day. The fact that I could help people um, and uh, make their experience, because let's face it, 
buying a home, buying a property, that's one of the biggest things you do in your life. It doesn't get bigger. And you want to make sure you have someone in your corner. That's all. It's as simple as that. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, okay, so much happening here. Let's jump to, um, I'm back. Um, by the way, that's Freddie DeSico, Freddie the Closer DeSico, and uh, he's speaking in the capacity of real estate. We've got Adam Handler, uh, the shark. Okay, he doesn't like that, but I like the shark, okay, because he's so good at getting that money from the insurance companies. We've got Nelson Madger, the maverick. We've got, of course, the maestro Conrad Pollock. And we're speaking in several different areas. Thank you so much, Freddie, for that. On the business side, on the real estate side, um, the number is 844-774-3529. Jumping on Facebook here quickly, Tracy Brooks says, asking for a friend. With what is going on now with pandemic and new rules and laws at USCIS, if someone filed for an adjustment of status, let us some, let us someday, someday in May 20, I'm, I'm reading verbatim, when, it, when is it expected to receive a notification of re recipient of application from USCIS? Receipt notice, if she's referring to a receipt notice on a case that she recently filed, um, they are taking some time. Uh, we actually filed a case uh, in May, uh, I think the second week of May, and we still have not received a receipt notice. So they're taking over a month. Um, they're working with limited staff. Um, a lot of officers are not working. Um, so things are taking a little slow. Okay. And there's another one also. Um, and by the way, um, I love the fact that people are actually pace, uh, posting their, their questions directly on the Facebook page. There's also the WhatsApp page, all right, which Tracy has put up from time to time. Um, this one says here, I am just wondering, since the first OE, why is it so difficult to find the correct answer to your question? Can we extend, reissue an immigrant visa that expired? Well, as we know, the law allows to reissue visas due reasons that are not in, I don't even understand that, that are not in control. You guys see this question on Facebook? I, no, uh, I, I don't have social media. Okay. <laughs> what the hell did you just say? <laughs> I, I, I don't do social media. I, I don't do social media. Dude, my 96-year-old Nana has Instagram. She loves no. this show, by the way. My mom God, has say, Nana Instagram. loves this show. 96 years old. Uh, That's just uh, okay, all right, I don't know. Let's, let's try this again. It says, I am just wondering since the first OE, why is it so difficult to find the correct answer to our question? Can we extend, reissue an immigrant visa that expired? Well, as all we, right. yeah, okay. An, o, an OE, she's referring to an operating instruction, which that's interesting that somebody would even know what that is. Um, yeah. So she's obviously done a little research. Um, extending an immigrant visa. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what they're referring to, but I'm going to guess that they're referring to the 551 stamp uh, that you, if you apply for your green card at, at a U.S. consulate and you're approved by the U.S. consulate, you get an immigrant visa application approval notice. You then get on a plane within 120 days, typically, and then you arrive in the United States, you give that package, that packet of forms to the CBP officer at JFK or wherever you're land, landing, and they issue you a stamp in your passport, which is an I-551 stamp. Some, and that's a temporary green card. Sometimes it takes time for that green card to come. Usually the green card comes within a month of arrival, but lately there is no usual anymore. Uh, it could come in a month, it could come in a week, it could come in a year, it, could, it may never come. Oftentimes those cards get mailed to the wrong address. Somebody didn't notify immigration, they changed their address, so that card gets sent somewhere else. Um, that might be what she's referring to. If it's an I-51 stamp that she's trying to extend, she, would, she could go into the immigration service by get it, first getting an info pass appointment, assuming USCIS is open, which it is, but I don't believe they're doing uh, info pass appointments yet. Uh, but once that is possible, she can go in and get a temporary stamp. I would, them, I, I would suggest that she shows that either she moved or the card went to someplace else or check with the post office or something like that. I think that might be what she's referring to. If not, maybe she wants to respond again and send in uh, her question with a little more clarity. Or maybe they want to call 
and you know, um, called 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Everyone that's watching that Facebook, that everyone that's listening to 93.5 <laughs> FM, we would appreciate it if you actually, you know, subscribe to the page so you can get notifications when we are on, when the attorneys are on, when myself is on, all right, the page that you're watching. And once again, the number to call is 844-774-3529. Here's another one directly on the page. I processed the I-130 online. It's in USCIS process, and it's not approved. Are USCIS still processing our case? Thank you. Getting a lot of these questions. Yes. Very simple. Things, right. things, again, things are just taking longer than usual. Right. We're in the middle of a pandemic, right? We've been yep. shut down for three months. <laughs> Immigration has no money. They've are, they're about to start furloughing their workers. These things are taking time. Okay. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is called Cruising with the Case Handler, where we speak on personal injury, immigration, and of course, real estate law and more. Dial the number. Everyone looking for a free phone consultation. If you call before the top of the hour, you're guaranteed one. So it's extremely important now that you actually dial the number and get your free consultation off the air, okay? The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. We're going to the big man, the top man, in a matter of 60 seconds, and that man happens to be the shark, a.k.a. the case handler, with a true success story, okay, of one of the individuals that he has helped, okay, to settle tons of money for. I mean, remember, he has settled well over $120 million. So if you're on Facebook, you need to listen because God forbid you get into an accident, you need, in my opinion, the best. I mean, the attorneys can't say that, but I know he is truly the best. If you get hurt in an accident, medical malpractice, construction accident, any accident, you should call Adam. I mean, I call Adam, you know, anyone says accident, I call Adam like just like that. I don't care what time of the, the night it is. You know, his wife's going to kill me, but I just call it. All right. So when you think of pain and suffering, think of Adam Handler. There you go. Well, what a way to look at it. <laughs> you know, all right. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do this question. And then Adam, it's all yours. So stand by with your true success story. You have settled well over $120 million for the Caribbean clients and more. So we want to say thank you so much for them calling 844-774-3529. Here's one here on the page that says, my mom petitioned for me and my son was added. I'm waiting to go and do our medical. My question is, my son is 24 years old and now will be 25 in December. Will my son still qualify when the ban is up? Probably not. Um, I, I, need, I, I would need more information in order to answer that question. Um, I'm assuming because they were able to include a child or son um, that it's a preference category they're definitely subject to the ban. How long that ban is gonna go on, yeah, who knows. Um, but even if the ban is lifted, Trump doesn't win re-election and, and the ban is that subsequent lifted, um, my guess is that person is not gonna be able to bring his child. Typically, you can't bring an accompanying child who's over 21. There are exceptions under what's called the CSPA, Child Status Protection Act. Um, it, it's gonna, it's, in order to determine um, whether that person over 21 can accompany, I would need to know the date of filing of the original petition and I would need to know the date the petition was approved. Then I can answer that question. But my guess is that person is not going to be able to bring his child. Okay, so um, quick one. My visa expired last month because of COVID-19. I'm a spouse of green cards holders. Can the U.S. Embassy renew my visa or is it impossible in this time because of this proclamation? Please, I need an answer. That's you, Maverick. Uh, well, the, the consulates are closed. So I, I'm not sure how you, how you can renew your visa if the consulate is closed. You can wait for the consulate to reopen and see if they would be willing to reissue or give you a new visa. But, you know, there is a travel ban. I don't know if this person is subject to the travel ban. I don't know what type of visa we're talking about. I need more information. All right. So you know, that, we, uh, we often deal with the consulate, uh, the consulate posts, even though they are closed. They are, some of them are still working and it is possible to get through to them. We have some contacts at different posts. It depends on which post we're talking about here, but we typically have access to most of the consular posts uh, that, that, that people deal with. And if that's a, an urgent issue, I would suggest you call us and, and talk to us and we might be able to help you out. 
Right. And do remember, folks, you can call now and the consultation is 100 percent free. I've seen firms around town charging two hundred and fifty five hundred dollars, one hundred dollars for consultation because you're actually watching this on Facebook and listening to us at ninety three point five FM. We're allowing you to get a 100 percent free consultation with an attorney, not a paralegal or someone else. You know, it's an attorney. So if you call before the top of the hour, you're guaranteed that free phone consultation with one of the attorneys off the air privately and confidentially so here's and, the, the and the phone right phone lines are ringing you know I'm, I'm i'm thrilled to see this response i'm not i'm not sure if it's the time of the day or if it's the fact that we have the closer on but but you know we're having a a, a really positive uh outpouring uh, of people calling and, and saving the number and setting up those free immigration and real estate consultations so kudos to you everybody you know i said i think it was yesterday um, or the day before, I kind of went off on a rampage, um, but I, I did it in, in a way that a father does it uh, for his children out of care and concern. And what I'll say again is, if you have a legal problem and you do nothing about it, shame on you. Shame on you. I don't want to hear uh, anybody, you know, either on social media or or in a social gathering saying, Oh man, I got this problem and this, this guy's screwing me and, and I don't know what to do. Shame on you because you have access to attorneys, really, really, really good attorneys, right? We can never say we're the best, but I'm going to declare and I declare it all the time. We're really, really, really good. And uh, we give the number out and we give it out because we want you to know that we're here for you. We're here to give you information and advice absolutely for free. And if we're able to help you, we respectfully ask that you allow us to do so. Our number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Immigration, call, get the consultation. Real estate, get the consultation. Personal injury, get the consultation. Matrimonial, consultation. Employment, consultation. Uh, you've got absolutely nothing to lose um, other than a few minutes of your time um, and uh you know, that's that I can't stress it enough. Shame on you if you do nothing. That's on you. You know, Squeeze, we're, we're not selling a dream, right? Because we have turned down cases. There have been people who have called and we've said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I'm sorry. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do or there's nothing we can do for you. You know, um, but I think it's important, you know, again, I mean, there's a reason we went to law school. There's a reason we passed the bar. There's a reason we've been doing what we do for as long as we do it. Um, you know, get information, call, you know, some of these questions, we just need more facts. You know, it's not as clear cut as giving us two or three facts and, you know, we're going to have an answer for you. Um, there's no harm in calling. Give us a call. If you have any questions, hopefully we can answer your question. If we can be of service, we will let you know we could be of service. And if we can't, we will tell you the same. 844-774-3529. Absolutely. So, uh, please, but I'd like to just uh, expand on what Adam and we're talking about. I can't tell you how many clients have come to me and they've already signed a legal document or they've already sent emails where they've bound themselves to a certain business or personal obligation. And I say to my clients, well, why didn't you call me before you signed? And sometimes they feel uncomfortable because they don't want the people they're working with to think they don't trust them or they didn't want to bother me. And you know what the funny thing is? The, the higher up the client is, the wealthier the client is, those guys and gals, they never sign anything. They always send everything to their lawyers. And, you know, I, I, I want to tell everyone, during your life, you're going to be asked to sign things. Maybe it's a broker, maybe it's your landlord, maybe it's your tenant, maybe it's uh, somebody that, you, that owes you money uh, or you owe money uh, on your business transactions. Anytime you have a legal document, don't assume that little writing on the bottom doesn't mean anything. Call us. We'll tell you. We, I've been reviewing these documents for 35 years. I'd like to think I have something to help you. And if I don't, at least you'll know what you're signing. We wouldn't get in the car with blindfolds on and drive. Why would we sign a legal document without having it read by a legal professional? So I just wanted to add that to the conversation. I want you to, I want you to take back something though, Freddie. Uh, no. I, so this is Squeeze here, folks. 
I want him to say, uh, take back um, something here um, that he said. He's got to say that in all cases, because I do believe that PPID is doing it and we can actually prove it. You said earlier, if something sounds too good to be true, then it's too good to be true. But every one of you here, you are doing free phone consultations. That sounds way too good yeah, to be that true. Is true. It, it does sound too good to be true. Yeah. And I know some people are sitting out there saying, Squeeze is a liar. He's lying through his teeth. He's lying, he's lying his ass off. There are no free phone consultation. So how do we challenge them? And, and you got to take back that part when it comes to PPID. I'm sorry, Fred. I'm, I'm sorry. Fred. Find out. <laughs> Call and find out. Present your questions that you have. Because during the course of your life, there are always things that pop into your head. Can I do this? Can I, should I not do that? We're not telling you we're going to give you the answer you want to hear. And we're not telling you that every problem, we come up with a solution. What we're saying is, if you, if you have a stomach ache, you have a, a doctor, an internist stomach. If the plumbing in your house isn't working, you call a plumber, not an electrician. You have a legal problem, you talk to your legal experienced legal professionals. It's just that simple. You find the right professional for the issues in your life. And as lawyers, we could say, just don't, don't, don't call us up, find out, see what Squeeze is telling you. And then, you know, afterwards you'll say, you know, that Squeeze was right. I didn't get the answer I wanted. Maybe, maybe I have to wait for the laws to change to be helped but at least I know where I stand. Everyone should know where they stand in life as much as possible. So that's what I have to say about that, Squeeze. You know, well, Squeeze, just, I'm sorry, just to add to something Fred said. I guess I we have, just killed Adam through success story. Nah, I have, right, this, is, this is quick, this is quick. This is We're about a minute. opportunity to get four lawyers together. This is, this is about, here. this is a minute. You know, I had a, cli I had a client who was arrested for possession of marijuana, okay? My client ultimately pled down and pled guilty to disorderly conduct, which is a violation. It's not even a misdemeanor. My client is traveling abroad, is coming back into the United States and gets stopped by CBP. CBP starts questioning him and CBP asks, I see you were arrested. What were you arrested for? My client says, I was smoking marijuana. I was arrested for possession of marijuana. CBP says, hey, hold on a second. Can you do me a favor and sign this paper? My client signs the paper. Do you know what that is? It's an admission. It's an admission to a crime that he had never previously accepted responsibility for. But now there is a signed writing by my client admitting, yeah, I got arrested for smoking marijuana. You know, and but I think- he did that under duress, Nelson. He, he didn't do that under duress because, you know, it's even when ICE shows up to your house, ICE doesn't barge in. ICE knocks on your door, shows you a picture of someone else and asks, can I come in? Then your they barge in. You're half, a, well, no, you're, you're half asleep, right? And they're showing you a picture of someone who you really don't know. So you think you're okay. So you open the door. Now you've consented. Now they come in and they say, hey, what's your name? I'm David Anarchy. Well, sir, it's you we're looking for. And they cuff you and they bring you in. You know, again, I think it's important for people to know their rights. I think it's important you know, as Fred said, this is not something a plumber could tell you. This is not something the travel agent around the corner that prepares your tax returns can tell you. You know, I think... Which some it, of them do, try I to think, tell you. I it's think, well, well, that's right. And you're going to go and you're going to listen to them and things are going to go south. And now, you know, from it's a true. small problem, you've got a bigger problem, right? And now... No, it, go ahead, Nelson. Go ahead, Conrad. In addition, uh, and we've been saying this for the last three, three and a half months that we've been on the air... You know, immigration is not your friend. CBP mm. is not your friend. The government, I hate to say it, you know, I, I'm as patriotic as the next guy, but the fact is the government is not your friend. You're an immigrant. You're an intending immigrant. You're a visitor. Immigration asks you to sign something, CBP, CIS, uh, whichever agency of the government is asking you to sign something. My guess is you don't want to sign it. All right? They are not your friend, please. If you take anything away from this, this show this morning, take away the fact that you cannot trust the CIS or the CBP. They are not working in your behalf. 
They are not your friend. Always have a skeptical attitude when it comes to the, those government agencies ask, asking you to sign something. Always be skeptical. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end the show now. But I want to remind everyone, this is what we do here, cruising with the case handler. And when we speak about the case handler, we were supposed to have a true success story, but I guess we all got in too deep and we were going back and forth. But remember, when it comes to automobile accidents, slip and fall accident, construction accidents, medical malpractice, you name it, Adam Handler has already proven himself on this station, off this station, in this community. He has settled well over $120 million. Now, don't let him feel bad because I know he wears his feelings on his sleeves. All right. I want everybody to actually, yep, there goes the settlements. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there goes the settlements. He's showing them in the millions. I want everybody to prove to Adam that we love him. All right. Dial the number and let it ring for 15 seconds and he will pick up and say, Adam, we love you, man. And thanks for what you're doing for the Caribbean community and beyond by helping them out when they get hurt in an accident. His number is 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome, but call 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. It's 10 o'clock. Boom, right there. So, ladies and gentlemen on Facebook, I want to say thank you all so much for watching. Um, it's been a great show, it's been wonderful. Gentlemen, it's been a, a very fire one. Uh, so many things. You know, Murphy screwed with us this morning, and look what happened. Look look what happened, Adam. You see, everything happens for we, a we reason. We fought back, man. I, I we gotta fought you, back, you know. You exceeded my we expectations said. this morning, Andy. <laughs> Once in a while, you, you, you catch me, and you, and you show me what you really are made of. And congratulations to you. Congratulations to Fred. This was uh, a banner show. The, the, the Facebook views and the comments and the shares are pretty much at an all record, all time record high. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about getting the message out that we are attorneys. We are here to help. We're embracing the community that has embraced us. The phone call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is free. Again, Fred said, there's no such thing as a free lunch, but we're not giving out free lunches. We're giving out free consultations, free legal advice. Try us out, see what we're about. You down with PPID squeeze? Yeah, I'm down with PPID, you know me. All right, 844-774-3529 right. or 844-PPID-LAW. And the D is for DeSeco. Ah, I like that, I like that. Um, okay, uh, Nelson, say something. You got 15 seconds before we go. Anything. Come on. I just want to thank everyone for listening and watching and uh, tune in. We'll be okay. back on tomorrow. Freddie, say something. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the firm and to let everyone know that there's yet another area of practice, of concern that we can be of help. I wish everyone the best. Stay healthy, stay safe. Keep your social distancing and hopefully I get to speak to some of you in good times and be able to help you in the tough of times. Conrad, your monologue. <laughs> Postscript, more like it. Um, these are trying times, you know, especially for the immigrant community. And, um, you know, there are a lot of things that are happening that are outside anyone's control, unfortunately. Uh, or at least until November 3rd. Um, but we are here to do what we can to do our part to help people in any way that it is, that is possible to help. And, um, and, and again, as we've said so many times, this is our way of giving back to the community. And we are really looking to help people out because again, the immigrant community more than any other community that I can think of is really under stress Besides the pandemic, you know, with all the immigration stuff going on, there's a lot, just a lot of bad stuff happening. So my advice would be just, hey, keep your head up, um, take it one day at a time, you know, and we'll get through this. Hopefully we'll get through it together and um, hopefully we can help out in whatever way we can. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I personally want to say thanks to each and every one for actually watching us and uh, tuning into 93.5 WVIPFM. It's been a great show. We must say thanks to our viewers, though, especially Linda Shaw, who is one of our true ambassadors. She she encourages and pushes uh, push people to actually share the page and so forth. And we do appreciate what you're doing, uh, Linda. I think she's actually in Antigua. I think you know uh, we still have questions coming in on the page. 
So uh, we'll get to those questions tomorrow, people, and we want to say thanks, but keep making the page more powerful by sharing it with others who really need help in the, the areas of law that you have heard these attorneys speak on. It's great. It's beautiful. We, you're ha actually helping people, and that's what being in the United States is all about. That's what the American dream is all about, helping each other. And that's what we do here each and every single day. Thanks to, of course, cruising with the case handler. Keep it locked. we got a whole lot more coming at you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the number, once again, is 844-774-3529. Okay, so tune in to us on this radio station, 93.5 FM. Tune in to us on Facebook here. Um, um, reach out to the attorneys, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are concluding. And we'll catch up with you tomorrow at 8.30 on the AM. Thank you for joining us. Eastern Standard Time, by the way.